Hello everybody, my name is Rodgon. I'm an artist, a designer, a teacher, a mentor, and today we are going to be drawing together. Yesterday we talked a little bit about girls and how to draw them. We talked a little bit about the structures, the features, the proportions, and we talked a little bit about hard surfaces. About how we can use these hard surfaces such as the ribcage and the collarbone and the pelvis and be able to start figuring out our bodies based on that seeing the body a little bit different than we normally do from like the lessons that we normally learn. So today we are going to be talking a little bit more about this. I really enjoyed the lesson yesterday so we are going to be doing it again today. Now before we start I want you guys to help me out by clicking the little heart button. Do 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 just click 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 so that more people actually join our lesson. Uh, let me join over here on YouTube. So that more people actually... And we have Mr. Seven! How is it going, Mr. Seven? Thankfully, the lighting is better on YouTube today. There you go. We have our hand. We have some watercolors. Uh, we have our post-it somewhere, and I think we are ready to start. So yesterday I was spending a little bit of time just doodling on my own, and I was just having some fun playing with body parts. Uh, we're not going to take any lives. And I also got a message from one of my followers asking me for advice. They sent me a drawing that they did themselves, and I tried to recreate it as good as I could, and then trying to give them advice based on his drawings. Now, I do offer one-on-one uh, -on -one services as well, if you guys are interested in actually having somebody review you. So you guys can hit me up for that. Those go for $100 for an hour. And But you guys, I normally use that for people that are really like looking to like find the next part, the next thing. Uh, not for anybody that's just trying to ask any random question. All those things can be just asked normally and I will gladly answer them but let's draw a body let's draw a body from head to toe how about that we are going to be explaining the body and why it's good to generalize it at first oh my god again okay so we are going to start with, we're going to start with the torso. Like if I'm going to be drawing any pose, in this case, it's going to be just a normal standing pose. I'm going to draw my torso like a beanbag. Now I have come to realize that the upper part of the beanbag tends to be a little bit bigger than the bottom, just a little bit. Okay. Tiny bit bigger that will give you a nice standard size for your rib cage and it's gonna give you your underwear line that you can use for your hip bones as you can see i'm drawing through my shape and creating the elements that i need i need these two openings so by doing this i have created my two openings for my legs I have my rib cage and I have my little divot that is going to help me figure out the middle part of my rib. From here, from finding this little point, I can go up a little bit and then find my collarbone. My collarbone at the top of my rib cage is going to be formed kind of like a baseball bat. This rib cage is also not flat. It's not just a box. It has much more of an inclination of this shape like this. Right? 
than a box. It's much, much more round than a box. So I don't like using a box for that. And then I honestly, I just care about the opening. This opening right here is everything. Like, I don't need to know how my butt's going to look. I just need to know where my leg is going to come out. Okay? So that is the one thing that I'm looking for when it comes down to my hips. Now, this is just the bone. So if we were to add booties and stuff like that to it, it would be on top of this. Okay? If you were going to add muscle structures, the muscle structures go on top of this thing. Right? So as we move down, let's keep that in mind. We're only drawing the, like, the bone structure at first. So we have hard surface number one, which is your ribcage. We have hard surface number two, which is your pelvic. Okay, this, these surfaces are the ones that are gonna give you your bumps, your like little structural designs, like the little things that pop out mostly are bones followed by muscles. Okay, so if you think about your bodies at first, Think about your bodies in this simple structure. Have a rib cage. And underwear on your bean bag. Yeah, let's uh, focus on these. And then let me show you guys how that translates to a more detailed character. Once you have this structure, It's easy. Let's say that we want a slightly, no, we'll still stick to like regular characters. If we want just a regular human being, you can have the width of your pelvis be the same width as your rib cage. And then literally have like no differentiation here. Now, if you start seeing this middle section as a little bit more playful section, I like to call it the squish zone. If you start seeing that section as malleable, but you keep thinking that these two hard surfaces are going to be static, as in these do not flex, they do not move, they do not shift really right so if we start playing around with that midsection and we start making it different let's say we want to make this character uh, chubby right so instead of having this be straight let's make this into something with a little bit more weight right the belly would also overflow right here so you can think about this as three sections too your abs your love handles so the more these grow the more they start to drape and the more they start to go over these hard surfaces. That's the reason that love handles drape over your love, like your hip bone. Okay? That is what happens. Your fat tissue is coming back up to this area, and this is what you get. Now it doesn't have to be that drastic, 
right? It can be anywhere in between, or you can go the other way and make someone even skinnier. Being, making someone skinnier takes a little bit more knowledge of anatomy because you need to understand that those bones and stuff that you draw are going to show more. So you need to understand it a little bit more. So that you can actually draw it more accurate. And so it's harder to draw skinnier people than it is to draw big people. It's also here that you add your muscle structures, like your back muscles, and your shoulders, and your pecs. But those are on top of your structure, so muscles go on top. Uh, let's read some messages because I see some messages. Uh, Campbell Vomer, hi, what's up? Emily Arts, hello everybody. Can you get your new book in the UK? My new book, uh, Art Block, you know, like the one that I announced yesterday on my Instagram, will be released as an ebook until I find the publisher in the UK. Once I find the publisher in the UK, I can get copies printed signed over like sent over to me and then shipped out but until i get that an ebook is going to be the way to do it and the reason that i like to do the ebook is kind of like a pre-order so the ebook works as a pre-order so you guys can help me get the book printed instead of asking for pre-orders you guys can just get a cool version of the book and you guys don't have to like worry if it's a good book when you want to spend the extra money to be able to buy the physical copy you know, it's just kind of like, like, a, like a preview. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm going to eat my breakfast. I woke up late today, so I'm running. I'm running on no caffeine, and that's killing me. But anyways, once we start visualizing the ribcage like this as three different elements... It's easy for us to think about drawing bodies in three sections. We start thinking, ooh, cool. It's no longer just a beanbag, right? So it stops being just a beanbag. Now it's a beanbag with a middle section. So we took the beanbag, we split it in three. And that creates our body shape. And it becomes a very accurate way to measure out your body. Now, when you start getting into awkward angles, that's, this is where it actually benefits you. Because then you start when you start your basic drawing of your beanbag. Now, once you establish your rib cage, it's easier to come up with the rest. Because now I see things as three elements. <clears throat> right? And this is more like a back view. So in the back view, Instead of having your collarbone, you have the back of your spine. So just drag that shape up and then create your baseball diamond, figuring out where the front is going to be. And now you have your front and your back of your shape. Which is going to help you when you start drawing necks and shoulders.
and breasts. And when you start drawing legs and arms and stuff like that, it's going to be very helpful for you to be able to learn all this stuff. Right, so this is going, these are valuable like tips that you gotta keep in mind because nothing clicked until I learned all this. Like honestly, bodies were like always stylized for me. They would always be like this. This is how I used to draw bodies. It was straight up this because I didn't really understand even what this bend was in the back. Right? Like when this was happening, it was just there in all my drawings because that was just the way that I got that angle. Even though it is a very similar approach, I wasn't thinking about this as like a voluminous shape like this. I was thinking more of just literally drawing these angles. So things like boobs and stuff like that were always hard for me because I didn't really see them like that. It would just be like, I would just draw shapes. Right? And then try to like make them look balanced. Which, in a lot of like retrospect, it, it's probably the reason that my drawings did not look great. Right. But as you learn a little bit more about anatomy and just a little bit more about placement of things, you start understanding that even though you did have a good drawing, you didn't really understand what you were drawing. It's kind of like when you sing along to a song and you know all the lyrics, but you don't know what the hell they're saying. And so you like read the pamphlets and like all the art book, like whatever, and then you're like, oh my god, I've been singing about that. And then as you learn how to interconnect the muscles, you are going to be able to come up with poses and stories that you never thought you would have been able to. And you'll be able to position them in any way you want without any limitations. But all this comes with knowledge and this comes with practice, right? Um, this comes with um, taking time and then just studying over and over. Like, for example, right here, if I wanted to throw this into it would be a lot here, not there. But then I can make this into a gun. Learning how your body moves is such a difficult thing because we always focus on learning how to stylize things better. Right? We are so focused on learning how to make something look cool that we forget that we're supposed to be practicing basics and structure and like all that stuff constantly so that we can draw things dynamically so that we can actually improve once we get to a certain area it's really like we fall into a trap right as artists we fall into the trap of thinking that we are okay and now we're good enough so therefore we have to stop learning we are good enough, so now it's time to stop. No, it, 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 that's not how it works. Uh, like, as an artist, you will be drawing the rest of your life. You will be drawing and learning and uh, picking up things from different people throughout your entire life. This is not going to be something that stops just because, you know, like, you... Uh, got good <laughs> I'm gonna draw like an old person see I just know that the leg is supposed to come out from there and from here so if my legs can come out from there I just need to ground them on the ground and then now we have a pelvis that's coming back and then we have this inner shape so I can make this guy chubby I can make this guy skinny what should we call him? we should make him what should we make him? let's go a bare belly so 
Okay, so bellies and stuff would originate from underneath the rib cage, and they would connect back where your pelvis is. But it has gravity. So I'm going to draw somebody with a little bit of a beer belly, but not many love handles. I know that my chubbiness goes up to my hip bone, and then my leg comes from underneath. Therefore, it creates that little bulge. This area right here would also be in shadows because it would be in the background. And therefore, I want to give it depth. The belly originates from the bottom of the rib cage and just has volume. So, you know, I need to make sure that it has volume. So I got to find its belly button. Maybe I can give it like a little piercing or something. Over here, we have our butt into our love handle. Okay, so now we have this big squish zone that was, now it looks like a pregnant lady. And then from there, you can just keep on drawing your character. Now, it might seem like I'm doing this pretty easy, and it really, it really is for me, though, because I've been doing this for so long. So don't get discouraged if you can't just figure out shapes like I do. That is just, there's no competition here, right? Not, like, I get this quite often, honestly, though, and it's kind of sad, but people get discouraged because they see that something comes easy to someone. And that's, just because it doesn't come easy to you, does not mean that you can't do something amazing with it. If you guys saw the stuff that I drew when I was, uh, when I was younger, right? Like when I decided to go into art, I decided to jump into it kind of impromptu too. Uh, without like much forethought or like much like consideration into what I was really getting into. Whenever you sign up as a career as something, you're essentially gambling your financial future on that, right? You're gambling your initial financial future on the fact that you are going to be able to be good enough doing whatever you are considering doing. So you have to be careful. You got to make sure that you decide right. Because otherwise you end up being in a shit world of like that with a career that you can't pay anything back with. So that is one thing that you have to be careful about. Okay, and so old women would have like saggy boobies. And they originate from the same place, the rib cage, so. But I want her like doing some boogie dancing or something. So these principles can apply to any age any style really you just have to adapt the the way that you measure the things or you stylize them depending on what you're trying to achieve i'll talk about legs in a second
And this is not something that takes a lifetime to learn. Uh, I, I'd say that I leveled up my anatomy knowledge in roughly about three months. Can we get a sketchbook tour? Mm, well, this one doesn't have a much much to tour. This one's barely started a couple days ago. So we have our cover page. We have our first few lessons. A little pinup of Vicky. My idea for the cover of Art Block. Then we drew a comic of me moving and packing everything up and how I'm living right now because I'm moving. <laughs> and then we talked about girls yesterday. And this video is on YouTube, so you guys can go check it out. Uh, and now today we are talking about bodies. Hello, uh, please share some gesture drawing practice process or we are, okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That actually sounds like a great idea. All right, so when we're drawing quickly, we don't have time to do all this structure, right? When we're drawing somebody at the subway or something like that, we need to like be able to draw a little bit quicker than just a normal strip, which comes a lot with drawing from memory. And this is going to involve your mental library. Mental library. What is a mental library? Well, the mental library is essentially all the stuff that you know how to draw. Right? Your mental library is essentially everything that you have learned how to draw from memory. Your mental library can be as little as just learning how to draw a happy face. And as expansive as learning how to draw absolutely everything that you see. Because you have learned like a good, uh, you know, like mechanism or pattern of recognition or some way to map out the human body or the structures. So this involves everything that we like to draw from characters, pinups, you know, everything that you want to draw is going to be dependent on you having, like, actually learned it. Monsters, dragons, dogs, horses, you know, all that stuff that you draw on a daily basis is going to be the things that are heavier in your mental library. So you have to spend time practicing your line work is also part of your mental library. Any skill set that you learn, any tip, any trick, anything like that is going to be if you learn how to draw like another character from like a TV show or something like that, that is going to be part of your mental library. Every time that you copy someone's style, like the nose is from Scott Campbell or something like that. Right? The eyes from like, I don't know, some other thing or like any time that you learn how to draw some other eye style. That's all into your mental library. The one time that you learn to draw hands properly. Right? That'll go into your mental library. Whenever you learn how to draw anything, anything a little bit better, that replaces what you have in your mental library. So in order to build up that mental library to be able to draw things like plants, right, rocks, grass, houses, clouds, 
clouds. Right? Learning how to draw all these things comes from your mental library. You can't develop your mental library if you just stay home and not go out and draw and live your life a little bit. So what you got to go out is go out. Live life. And doodle. Okay, that is how you build your mental library. You don't build it looking at Pinterest. That is, that's also a, a decent way to go about learning new styles and techniques, but that's not really the best way to approach learning your, like, your day-to-day, -day, like, textures and stuff like that. Like, it, nothing beats actually going out and seeing what plants look like and trying to replicate that with little scribbles. Okay? Nothing beats seeing somebody with like a super cool droopy eyelid or something and trying to replicate that and see if you can understand enough to be able to do that. And if you can't, then wow, you have just discovered something you can work on. So now if you can't understand something you look at, like, oh my God, why can't I draw that? And see that as an exciting new thing because that doesn't really happen often anymore once you get to a certain point. Right? You're going to be either too arrogant or too proud to say that you don't know how to draw something. So that is how you might draw things from memory a little bit better. And that's how you need to do that if you're going to be drawing people at the subway and stuff like that. Let's say that you have just somebody like drinking a coffee. And we see them and we have to establish a scene really quickly, right? So we establish a table. Uh, maybe they just have their coffee on the table. So I'm establishing a level of perspective so that we can sit a character down in here, right? All this has depth, all this has shape. I'm just doing it really loosely because I need a surface. Now from here, depending on what type of coffee it is, if it's a mug or anything like that, I established the scene. Then from there, I decide where I want the characters to look. Now, I'm going to look and draw in bulk in masses. So I'm going to look for the biggest elements of fashion or of just a mass that is going to take up the silhouette of my shape. Let's say they have like a scarf and I'm very loosely adding all these details in. Very loosely. Like I'm not really focusing too much on actual details. I'm just looking at general shapes anytime that I'm looking at someone new. Then I start figuring out how that's going to work in perspective. How is that going to be grabbing on to this? How far out would my arm need to go? And that comes with the knowledge of perspective and a little bit of anatomy. Right. And so that's going to if this stuff is uh, hard for you to figure out, then you might need to do a little bit more practice with your perspective and your anatomy. So you understand a little bit more foreshortening and stuff. Then from there, I get to decide what I want to be doing with my character. Most people, which is kind of helpful, but most people are just constantly looking down whenever they're at a coffee shop. I don't know why, but it's just a constant thing. People are just constantly looking down. So we'll draw this character looking down a little. And I'm going to refer to that looking down with my eyes not completely closed but if the eye is closed that means you see more of the eyelid and then that goes into my eyebrow line I don't like to draw eyebrows the same 
I think it takes away a little bit of personality when you do that. So outside of our mask, we have our nose canal, so we know where our nose is supposed to come out from. So in this case, let's give our nose. Then from here to here, we have our mouth. Depending on whatever mouth they're making, uh, I normally just draw something like this. Just something to indicate that the mouth is there, give them a little bit of attitude, depending on what they're doing. And little by little, you just start adding detail. Now at this point, the person could not even be there and I could finish the sketch. Because I have captured everything that I would need from that person. And that's how you would just approach doing like live drawings in public. Like just very, very loosely, gesturally, like draw your, them in. Like they don't have to be perfect because you don't have time for that when it comes down to going to a coffee shop. I keep ripping pages out of my sketchbook. <clears throat> oh, don't do that. Why would you do that? Why would you rip pages out of your sketchbook like that? Like, are you that like upset with a drawing that you need to remove it physically from your proximity so that it doesn't hurt you? No, actually no, let's make those the feet and then we'll make the thighs come behind. Boom. Make a character just standing out with their chest out. Let's make it tan now. And just taking into consideration all the elements that we've been talking about. Midsection into hip bones into underwear line gives me my torso. And then from there, it's just a matter of whatever face I want to give. Now let's talk a little bit about the arms because I have a feeling people are like, well, what about the arms? So let's talk about the arms. How long do your arms have to be? So your arms tend to be about this is how I break them down. We have a rib cage and we have our collarbone that we talked about already. Okay, so if we have our collarbone points, our shoulder is going to go around your initial rib cage and it's gonna wrap around your rib cage. But an easy way to do this, to keep that in mind, is that it also connects to your pectoral muscle, right? So if you start seeing your upper part of your arm more like this, it becomes a lot easier to draw that shape going around color be it a woman or man but what uh, that would be the reason for my removing so I get it <laughs> how do you draw something holding a cup uh, 
we're not talking about like hands right now. So we're not gonna be doing that. But I guess I can show you guys quickly. Okay, I'll show you guys on this. One. So if you're holding a cup, you would draw the cup first. Then I would set my first knuckle, which is the middle knuckle. And then that dictates where my initial fingers would go around. So if my initial finger's right there, that means my middle finger's right there. So that means that my wrist is somewhere around here. Then to one side of this, I have one finger. To this side, I have two fingers. And then I connect everything to my palm and I decide what I wanna do with this. So if this is holding it like that, then this finger is coming in. So that's kind of how I'm thinking whenever I'm drawing anything that's wrapping around. Uh, I'll take the element and then I will figure out the middle part of my hand. And I will wrap this stuff around this shape. Everything wraps around that shape, and therefore, if this had like a handle or something like that, it just becomes easier to be able to draw. Now, the hand in itself, if you start with the middle knuckle, that gives you your top and your bottom of your hand, right? So that's a pretty helpful measurement. So your th the thickness of your hand is only as wide as your knuckle. Right? So if you find your knuckle, you can decide everything else of the hand relatively easy. Even if it's just a quick little sketch of it. It's just a very fun way to be able to see your hands and not have to be stressed out about not knowing where the placement is. So finding your initial knuckle is the only piece of information you really need to draw your hand around things. Find your initial knuckle and then from there, you, you know that one side of your hand has one finger towards your thumb side. And to the other side, there's two more. So let's change it up. A little. <laughs> it still works. Ta -da. So that is one way that you can focus on drawing hands. Okay, but let's move back to our bodies. Uh, okay, so the arms. The arms are going to work like this. You're going to have your shoulder and your pectoral muscles. Then you're going to have your arm, which is going to be the initial part of your arm, that initial segment is going to go to your end of your rib cage. That is where your elbow is going. The end of your rib cage. Then from there, this same distance that you use here, you're going to overlap it a little bit. Overlap it a tiny bit because they have to interconnect. And that is going to lead all the way to the top of your hand without your fingers without your fingers so this distance is the same distance as here from here to here overlap it a little bit and up to your fingers boom and then your fingers are extra
And that is how you get a very easily proportionable character that's going to work and that's going to be functional. That could work for men and women. That's not something that changes with relevancy. That's a good indicator of where your rib cage and your arm is supposed to go. And it's a pretty balanced thing, even if you have a bigger arm. Right? It becomes a very stable and easy way to remember that. So your arm goes, uh, we should save this for legs. So your arm is going to always reach. about that point. Regardless of where you move it. Okay, so that is the first measurement. The second measurement is this distance, right? Again, same distance without your fingers. So, and then the connection points for the arm and the leg work like this. So if you have your shoulder and your pectoral muscle, it's kind of like a scoop, right? And then the arm comes underneath that scoop, creating your initial shape for your arm. And then your rib cage and your back muscles come in after that, right? So all your muscles in your rib cage come in after that, layering this as a one, two, three, four, five system. What if I can draw bodies, hands, and all that, but not the shape of the face? Then I would say that if you're able to draw this, right, but you're not able to draw this, then there's something that is getting thrown off in your, in your mapping in your brain. So there's something that is just visually like stopping you from being able to understand these concepts because it's the same concept for the rib cage and for the mask right and it's the same concept for the arms and how they interconnect with each other So everything interconnects like this, be it a rib cage, be it a face, or be it an arm, be it a leg. Right? Whatever we decide, this is the same basic premise that we're going to be assuming is going to be useful for us because it seems to be a useful concept to learn this overlapping of shapes with a rotation point is a very, very solid structure to learn. This is what's going on here, 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 all over here. Uh, it's interlocking shapes that help you understand concepts like the knee, concepts like the ankles, concepts like your arms, wrists, stuff like that. All this is interconnected shapes like that. Only I think the hips are not necessarily like that. But everything else on your body is just interconnected like that. Right? So even your jaw is like that. 
You have that same concept in your jaw. Right? So, the sooner that we learn to adapt into that, the easier it's going to be for us to be able to understand how our body works a little bit better. Right? Kennedy! Many men have also saggy boobies. Yes, they do. What would be your advice for someone with um, Fantasia to learn to draw? I don't know what Aphantasia is, but I have a feeling it's the depth perception thing. So if, if your problem is depth perception and you can't really fan, like imagine things like this, learn to do it by like mimicry, right? Sit down one day and then just do a circle and then trace a circle inside of a circle until you touch both edges. And you do this and you start adding little by little. Little by little you start drawing the back parts of them but you still visualize it there. And you start adding crosshairs. And little by little you start getting these shapes that are going to resemble something like this right once you have that then it's just basic perspective and that is something that you can still learn even if you have conditions like that finding out mapping points and then taking those elements and then drawing things inside of them like eyes teaches you how to draw eyes in different ways taking elements like that and drawing noses or ears or something teaches you how to draw noses in different angles in a simplified way so if that concept is hard for you you need to go practice these concepts so that you can visualize these elements how they're supposed to. If you have problems with depth perception, practice doing exercises like these so that you can actually go about understanding the concept even if you can't visualize it 100%. You'll still be able to uh, actually like replicate it and mimic it. Uh, what up, Rodgon? Mr. Art of James MJ Fox, have you been? Have you moved yet? I have not moved yet. I don't move at the end of the month. Actually, no, I move in the middle of next month, so I, I have to find a thing to do for like two weeks. Hmm. If, but if we approach some model with five minute, two minute, one minute drawings, well, you're going to have like different levels of drawing, right? And if you're going to be doing that uh, for like a one minute sketch, you'd probably just want to get like the flow of everything. You wouldn't worry too much about details. You would probably be more concerned with getting the general flow of the actual like shape. Right. You'd be concerned with just drawing something quickly. Getting the overall gesture done, and that's about a minute. Okay? So I'd be more concerned about drawing something like that. If I were at a, like a five-minute pose, that's a lot of time. Like, like for me, at least, that seems like a lot of time. So I would go in and I'd start structurally breaking it down and seeing how the body's structured and I would start just mapping things out like that. Right? Like 
the reason that it's quick for me is because I've also done a lot of life drawing in my life. So, I'm, and I'm not drawing to the aim of drawing a realistic thing. I'm not trying to re, like recreate my, like what I'm seeing in front of me. I'm trying to see that and then try to create something from it. So I'm constantly thinking about what would be a better pinup pose? Like, can I use that? Can I take this? Can I use that? Can I like, how would that look if I did this? And I start adding little animals and stuff like that to the drawing. Like I'll start adding like little scenery. Right. If I have five minutes, I would probably have time to like shade it and add like details, like a little background and stuff. That's what I would do with five minutes. And if I had what, 10 minutes? Oh no, two minutes. If I had two minutes, then I'd be more like, I would focus a lot more on the angles and seeing if I can map out my anatomy right. Like I'd be more concerned with like seeing if I can actually map out my pose right and have it look dynamic. just because it's something that I don't have a lot of uh, time to do. So I'm just going to very quickly try to like recreate these poses. But my main focus is going to be on getting the right angles for my rib cage and my, the right angles. Oh, you guys can't see that. And getting the right angles for everything. Right. If I was doing another like quick little doodle, like I said, I would just bunch up the hair into one big piece and then just start figuring out how my body would work depending on whatever pose that I'm making. Hey, Jesse, thank you for donating. That's awesome. I appreciate it. See, I don't necessarily... The key point is to think of your rib cage and your main body mass as your rib cage and your hip bones, right? This is step one. Step two is understanding the squish zone. Squish. Step three is understanding how things overlap. And step four is understanding the actual anatomy of your elements, which is something that is going to be learn anatomy. That is something that cannot be replaced with, you know, like a podcast or somebody just talking to you. This is something you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to actually practice. You're going to have to actually go out and draw something. Woo. One thing that I like to do is I think that working out, if you work out, you're going to have a better understanding of muscles. Uh, not because you see them more, but more because you're going to feel them. You're going to learn to feel your muscles and you're going to start understanding a little bit more about how they're connected. This is something that I highly recommend everyone. It, but I know that it's something that comes with like actual like having to dedicate time out of your day to do so. So what I want you guys to try, and this is just at first, and feel free to say no and feel free to not do it. But the next time that you find yourself sitting down watching TV, just sit down and like hold a push-up pose for a little bit. Right? Press your arms against each other and create a little bit of like tension so that you use your muscles every day. If you're just sitting at your desk, chill while you're eating lunch and then just do that. 
and you guys will see a bunch of improvement really really quickly when it comes down to your health all right so we have been on for about an hour now i'm getting pretty good at getting these lessons to be about an hour so i want to thank you guys for having the patience and the time to be here with me today I want to say thank you to everybody that is uh, donating to me in my different social medias. People that support me with those $5 a month that, you know, you guys send. It does make a difference over time. And it is something that will be eventually my main source of income. Uh, that alongside with book sales. And along with that, I have a new book that's going to release tomorrow. The name is Art Blog. And it is going to consist of a lot of the sketch uh, sketches that we did on stream. So all the things that we have done with, you know, learning and teaching and stuff like that, that is something that I wanted to get, you know, out as a book for you guys. The book will be released as a digital ebook or as, and then that's perfect for the reason that it released it. It's a reference book. It's for you to break out of art block. So the ebook will help you guys with that. I will get the printed book the moment that I get my, myself established in the UK. I will find the printer and then I will get that uploaded so you guys can actually buy a printed signed copy for yourselves. But until then, it'll be an ebook. I also need to get the pinups book printed. So I also wanted to wait until I moved in order to be able to have um, the ability to sell signed copies of that. This was so informative. Thank you for doing this live. Hope you have an awesome day. I plan to. I plan to have an amazing day today. I'm going to go play some pool with some friends. Uh, I got to talk to my lovely lady. I get to be with her in about 28 days. That just could not come soon enough. But yeah, it's been a really wonderful like month. M moving out of this apartment is going to be... I mean, it's my little hobbit hole. I'm, I'm going to miss it. But at the same time, I might be getting a new place up there in Scotland. So it's going to be really cool. I get to decorate something, set up my own studio. I'll have a lot more space. So it's going to be awesome. All right. So with that being said, I think we are done with our sketch for today. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys learned a little bit. If you guys do feel like you guys want to learn more and you guys don't know where to go, there's good resources over in my YouTube channel. If you guys want to go there, there's over 200 videos that you guys can look at that you guys can use to uh, learn and expand your horizon when it comes down to this little thing we call Art World. So I encourage you guys to go watch them. They are all free. I do not necessarily, I don't like to charge for my knowledge, especially when I'm sharing it with everybody in the world. So you guys have access to those videos. As long as you guys just go subscribe, I believe they should be there for you to access anytime you want. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Love you all. Uh, I sent out my free gift to my subscribers, which is a preliminary copy of that um uh, art blocks book so if you guys want to subscribe and you guys will get some free uh, good stuff every month as long as templates and you know, like a bunch of other things that i like to just give people because i think that they will help them get better and succeed in their careers that is my goal my goal is to help you guys out so thank you guys so much have a wonderful day love you all draw a little smile a little laugh a little and uh yeah talk to you soon